Good morning, my Bethine family, visitors and friends. My name is Christine Brown. I stand before you this morning to welcome the visitors. We are the Beth Eden Baptist Church. We're located at 11121 South Loomers. Our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Craig M. Jenkins. We are delighted that you came to worship with us this morning. On behalf of our pastor and the Beth Eden family, we thank you and please come again.
Greetings, church family. I have your announcements for Sunday, March 14th, 2021. The Brotherhood and Sisterhood Ministries of the Church are pleased to announce that college scholarships will be awarded to eligible members of Beth Eden. To request an application, email the church at churchoffice at bethedenbaptistchurch.org. That's churchoffice at bethedenbaptistchurch.org. The deadline to submit applications is Saturday, March 27th. To submit your application, you can either email it back to the church office, mail it, or place it in the church's outdoor mailbox. Please remember the deadline to submit your scholarship application is Saturday, March 27th. And all of your questions can be forwarded to Sister Shante Mack. Serving you, this is a message from the Sisterhood and Brotherhood Ministries of Beth Eden. To all Beth Eden ministry leaders and presidents, you can now schedule your ministry meetings via Zoom. For further information, please contact the church office by calling 773-233-6953. Beth Eden members, you can receive your copy of the new quarterly daily meditation books by coming to the church office Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Also, Roseland Community Hospital, located at 45 West 111th Street in Chicago, is a COVID-19 vaccination site. For information, call 773-995-3000. The Beth Eden family extends deepest condolences to Sister Henrietta Christian and Dr. K. Ward McDuffie in response to the passing of their brother, Mr. Edward S. Christian, and to Sister Alice Daniels and the Couch family in response to the passing of their loved one, Mr. James Couch. Please keep these families in your prayers as they deal with this time. We invite you to join our Sunday worship service every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. via Zoom. The meeting ID is 958-0500-0607. And the passcode is 11121-POUND. Or you can dial in at 312-626-6799. And the ID number is 9580-5000-607-POUND. As always, our prayer line is open Monday through Thursday at 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 9 p.m and Fridays only at 9 a.m. and 12 noon. For prayer, you can dial 712-775-7035, and the access code is 709-315-POUND. Please continue to support the obligations of the church through your tithes and offerings. Your contributions can be given through Givelify, Zelle, your financial institution, or simply by depositing your donation in the church mailbox. And as always, remember to follow the guidelines set by the Centers for Disease Control by wearing a mask in public, washing your hands for at least 20 seconds, and by practicing social distancing. Thank you, and God bless you. I'm Deacon Gardas H. Watts, Sr., bringing in the morning prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. Heavenly Father, spiritually inspire each and every one the sound of my voice. Let them know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Let them know if if you follow the divine laws of God, God will hear you when you call upon him. When I was in trouble and day-to-day -day life was a struggle, the Lord took me in when I needed a friend. He made my life worth living. That's why I would praise you, O Lord, with every breath that I take. I would praise you, O Lord, this promise I make. 
When eternity ends and starts all over again, I will praise you. You see, life is filled with swift transition. Not unmoved, this earth can stand. So build your hopes and dreams on things that are eternal. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Beth Eaton. Our scripture for today is taken from Philippians, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse. And it says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So much to
Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, dear God, we thank you for this opportunity of preaching your word. I ask, dear God, that you would take me out of myself and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Speak to me and through me, dear God, so I can hear what it is you have to say and that we, your people, may hear what it is you have to say through me. Let the anointing fall on us. Let it fall afresh on us in our homes, wherever we may be viewing this ministry. We ask God that you will please hear this prayer. In the name of Jesus, we do offer it unto you. Amen and amen. I want to do what they call a subject sermon. Uh, I, I just need to talk about some things with the hope that we will be blessed. And uh, if, if there's a sermon topic, I just want to call it uh, one year ago. One, one year ago. Uh, from February of 2020 up until now, we as a nation and as a world have gone through much, primarily because of a pandemic. It has affected us. People have debated as to how it got started, but the reality is uh, people were affected. I know in this country uh, in February, uh, my wife was in Seattle, Washington, where a great number of seniors had begun to get ill and to die. Uh, there was talk as to what this virus was and where it came from, and it became challenging as people try to find out what is going on. All over the world, people were being affected by what was eventually called COVID-19. In this country alone, the United States alone, over 528,000 people have died. That's more than Soldiers who died in World War II, World War I, and the Vietnam War combined. People have died in this past year. And it's affected all of us. It has affected our economy. As we saw, people losing jobs and people wrestling with how they were going to pay their bills and how they're going to provide for their children. It affected the economy, the, the jobs. People were losing jobs left and right. They were just losing jobs and some having to find out how they were going to make the ends meet to provide for the family. Mortgages began to lack as far as its payment because decisions had to be made in regards to what was important. Providing for your family, providing medication that is needed and buying it. They had to answer some major questions. People, the same situation regarding their rent. Knowing that the rent was due, they could not afford to pay the rent because they're trying to save money. I'm talking about what's happened in this past year. School closings because of people getting sick and teachers and administrators being afraid about uh, concerning this virus, not knowing what to do and how it will affect the school as a whole and teachers and unions and administrations began to fight or just butt heads as he tried to come up with answers. I'm just talking about in this last year. Come on, talk to me, y'all. We've had food shortages. People began to fight over food in the supermarket. You may remember even when it came to toiletry supplies, such as paper towels and 
toilet paper, people literally fighting because they wanted to stock up and to make sure that they had enough. I'm just talking about what has happened in this year, this past year. Young people had to learn this new thing called Zoom. And older folk had to learn what was called virtual reality and having meetings and having to sit down behind a computer desk for hours at a time as people tried to share concerns and have meetings and having to say, please mute your phone or please unmute your phone and uh, take the dog out pick up the garbage while this is going on, while you're trying to have a meeting and the church trying to learn how to have a virtual, yeah, a virtual service. That, that this thing is real and as, as we try to find out how we can do ministry. This is, this is new, all of a sudden we're outside of the church and, and yet the ministry has to go. I'm just talking about what has happened in this one year. We got the closed in feelings because the restaurants were closed. You couldn't go out. You couldn't, you couldn't go out. And so we found ourselves housed in our homes, wanting to get out, but can't get out. Look at the church. Oh, as much as we love the church, the fellowship of the church is being able to come together in the church, to hear the choir sing in the church, to hear the preacher preach in the church, to hear the deacons pray, just to be in fellowship. Hey, help me, Holy Ghost. Just to be in fellowship with one another has been challenged in this past year. There no time for special days. At church anniversary and Men's Day and Women's Day, we could not come together in this past year because of this pandemic. We couldn't even hug one another. We found ourselves hugging at a distance. We found ourselves fist bumping at a distance, founding ourselves waving at a distance, couldn't give a hug, couldn't give an embrace. I'm just talking about this year, and I wish somebody would talk back to me because it hasn't been a great year. It has been a year of challenge. It has been a year that we witnessed even something that we did not like to see. Uh, Mr. George Floyd, we saw him murdered. We saw him. We saw the knee on the neck for eight minutes and 40 plus seconds, we saw his life taken from him and, and people protested and, and some looters came about, but there were people who were just saying, we're tired of being tired of how we're being treated. And then we had to say, well, you know, we got to do something, so we got to march. We got to march and we're going to let it be known that black lives matter. I don't care what folk may say, but people need to know that black lives matter. So we march. Then we marched, and the more we marched, the more people got upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We painted the street, Black Lives Matter. But we find that even the president at that time, President Trump, did not like what was going on. And when we marched in D.C., he had his cronies out there to disturb the march and, and to have a chemical gas to disperse the crowd because there were people who were simply saying we got to stand for right and righteousness. I'm just talking about what's happened in this last year. Black lives matter. The lambs are crying out. Listen to the lambs. All are crying. They're crying out for righteousness, crying out for justice. And then the concern about being vaccinated. We have an administration at that time that was saying, you don't need to get vaccinated. Just drink some bleach mixture. Just try something else and try something else. You don't need to take it. But yet all the while, people are dying, 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 dying. And it seemed as though there was no answer. The government didn't seem to know what to do. They didn't know how to give guidance for the states. And everybody's doing their own thing, wondering what's going to happen. I'm talking about what's happened in this past year. You got to wear a mask, social distancing, and washing of the hands, and yet there are people who still don't wear a mask, and I can't understand it. I, they, they don't wear a mask. They, they'll put a seatbelt on while they're riding their car, but don't give a care about one another when it comes to wearing a mask. How difficult is that? I'm talking about all that's going on in this past year. Yeah, we've had parishioners who have died of COVID-19. We've had parishioners who have been affected by COVID-19 and it affects all of us in one way or another. I'm just talking about this last year. 
A year ago, my mother-in-law was able to drive to church, walk around the house. But when the church closed up, she couldn't get to church. And she's 96 years of age, and, and the desire that she had uh, last year at this time, she found herself not being able to go to church. And so now she, she's fine mentally, but physically she's challenged. She just cannot get up and walk like she used to or just walk to the car or to get in her car and drive. She's been challenged. It has affected, not only you, it's affected me, y'all. This pandemic is real. The challenges are real. The circumstances are real. And my brothers and sisters, we need to recognize that this is the world we live in right now. We need to recognize that these are the times that we're, that tribe men's souls. We got to recognize that there would be challenges upon challenges upon challenges upon challenges that we must face. And so I told you this is, this is a subject sermon, so I just want to just talk about this year. And, 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 and what is it that, that I can share with you? Well, today, and let, let's talk about today. I talked about the past year, the, this past, so let's call that the past. But let's talk about today. In the midst of all that's going on, even today, we have to wear a mask. Even today, there are people who are not getting vaccinated. Even today, there are people who are debating as to whether or not they should do it. Even today, there are people who are still outside of the school, who still are not uh, employed, who are still facing the challenges of their rent or mortgage. Today, that is going on right now. Today, as I speak to you right now, there are homes on the verge of breaking up because of the tension that has been caused by all of this madness in the world. Today, that's going on. Well, is there a word for today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. I just want to share two passages of Scripture, and then I'll be through with, through with this message with the hope that it will just bless your spirit. Uh, the first is just uh, to embrace God's Word. And, and there are several passages of Scripture I want to share with you. Um, and, and the first is Psalm 118.24. This is the day. The Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yesterday is gone. I'm talking about right now. This is the day. <laughs> this is the day. Right now. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Now we need to wrestle with this because a lot of us you read this passage and we know up our heart, but we need to take it apart as to what it means. And I just want to share this with you on today, that this passage, Psalm 118, 24, reminds us that this is the Lord's day. You did not make the day. I did not make the day. The Lord made this day. This is the day. <laughs> that the Lord has made. The sun, yep, yeah, that's God's. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. The clouds, that's God. The rain, wherever it may be, the snow. This is God's day. This is the day the Lord has made. Now, now, now what we need to do is, 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 is rejoice in this, and that is that God is allowing us to participate in God's day. Stay with me here. In the midst of coronavirus, we're here. In the midst of joblessness, we're here. In the midst of homelessness, we're here. In the midst of the challenges of life, we are here because the Lord is allowing us to participate in his day. And my brothers and sisters, once we realize, hey, once we realize that God allows us to be a part of God's day, there ought to be something on the inside that makes you recognize that God sure enough loves you, that God cares for you, that God has a special place in his heart for you. This is is the day the Lord has made. You are a part of God's day. And you ought to be thank God for that. Stop complaining because it's raining. Stop complaining because things are not going your way. Stop complaining about
about this not being right and that not being right, but just start praising God that God has you in God's day because if God has you in God's day, God is saying, I got you. I got your back. I'm there for you. High on a mountain, low on a valley, you are in my day. I know your name. I'm watching out for you. I care about you. I'll provide for you. I'll bless you because you are in my day. And all God wants us to do is rejoice. Rejoice. Be thankful. Praise God. Rejoice. Be happy. Yes, let it be known that you're glad to be here one more time. Thank God for another day of life. Thank God for another day of blessings. You might be sick, but you're still breathing. Thank God that he's able to be with you. Thank God that you're waking up with a sound mind. Thank God for the strength in your body. This is the day the Lord has made, so rejoice. <laughs> rejoice rejoice and be glad be glad in it I don't know how you feel but just to tell the Lord thank you one more time <laughs> just, just to tell him thank you one more time that puts a smile on my face to tell God thank you one more time yeah I have joy in my heart yes I've seen sickness yes I've seen death but yet uh, it's personal God has us here for a reason everybody's going to die we know that but while the blood is running warm in our veins got to praise him everybody's going to leave this earth we know that so why not Praise God until the Lord calls you home. Why not be thankful to God while you have the activity of your limbs? This is the day the Lord's may rejoice and be glad in it. I told you the past, what's happened this last year. I try to encourage you with what's right now. So let's talk about the future. And I found a passage of scripture that I believe that will help us. Yeah. <laughs> It'll help us. Uh, one verse in chapter 4, Philippians, verse number 19. And my God shall, shall supply. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall. That's in the future. Huh? He's blessing us right now and shall provide, shall supply, shall make us full, shall let us have an overflow. He shall supply our every need. And not every want. Help me, Lord. Not every want, but every need. A lot of us get it all confused because uh, 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 we want this, we want that. But God is saying, I will give you what you need. I will bless you with what you need. I will make sure you have what you need. And it's according to my riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God will give you what you need. Yeah, you got to have food. It doesn't mean you have to eat uh, lobster. It doesn't mean you have to have caviar. It doesn't mean you have to have peanut butter and jelly. I told I told a class the other day, growing up as a kid, I had mayonnaise sandwiches. And they were good. And I think Brother Dexter said his was a miracle whip. <laughs> miracle. But God supplies whatever it is that you need. I'm talking about the tomorrows of your life. God will supply according to his riches. In glory, by Christ Jesus. is that by Christ Jesus, 
that we need to make sure we understand. Because there's something about this journey that we're on, that we're going to live down here. And because of Christ Jesus, we shall live again. So what are you saying? The word is reminding us that what is most important, if we're going to make it down here, is to know that you're saved, is to know that you have a relationship with the Lord, is to know that his name is Jesus, is to know that he is the Savior of the world. I cannot help but get excited when I think of how the Lord saved me. And if you just think about yourself, we were all sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more, but the master of the sea. I said he heard, I said he heard, he heard, I said he heard, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. I'm saying that Jesus gave his life, he died so I might live. I said he died for your sins and he died for my sins. And I'm not worried about tomorrow because the Lord will supply my every need. I'm not worried about how it's going to end down here because the Lord has fixed it so that I have everlasting life. I get joy when I think of what the Lord has done for me. I can look at the past and say, sure enough, it's been a rough year, but as I stand here today, there's joy in my heart because the Lord is moving right now and I feel his presence all over me. There's something about today and if I praise God today, I know my tomorrow is secure. If I praise God today, I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Should we worry? Why should when shadows come? Why should our hearts be lonely and long for a heaven and a home when Jesus is our portion? A constant friend is he. His eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His eye, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And I don't care. You may say you can't hold a note, but God gives you a song. And you ought to be able to say, I sing because I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I know things are not as well as I hope them to be, but I sing because I'm free. His eye woo, is on the sparrow. And I know, yes, I know, I know he watches me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just, I just wanted to do a little subject sermon <laughs> to talk about this past year, to talk about where we are today and the tomorrow that is to come. I, I make an appeal now that maybe somebody here today that has not accepted Jesus as their Savior I want you to know that as he gave his life, as he ascended into heaven on the resurrection morning, the word is that he's coming back again. He's coming back to receive you, coming back to receive me. And there's great joy there. He shall supply our every need. Yeah, according to his riches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Give your life to Christ. That's what I'm saying. How are you going to make it? Give your life to Christ. How are you going to make it in all this craziness? Give your life to Christ. 
let it be known that the Lord is real in your life. And all you have to do is say yes, because the Lord has already said yes to you. Just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Thank you, God, for allowing me to share these words. I ask in Jesus' name that has been received. I ask you, God, to bless. I'm asking you to, hallelujah, hallelujah, that, 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 that you would just let your love wrap all of us up. I'm grateful, God, for what you're doing in my life. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know you hold tomorrow. You hold tomorrow. And so, God, I can rejoice right now. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I pray that this message goes forth with power and boldness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. At the close of every service at Beth Eden Baptist Church, we have a benediction that we share. And I ask that you would share in this benediction by repeating these words after me. May God be within us to refresh us, around us, to protect us, before us, to guide us, above us, to bless us, and beneath us to hold us up. Now, in your home, wherever you may be, just point to somebody, shout it out. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the Lord wants you to be saved. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It has been six months. It's good to be here, just to hear the songs of Zion, just to see one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. But while praying on my knees, I heard the small voice speak to me, stand still, my child, and concentrate on me. For it's already done, hallelujah, it's already done, thank you Jesus, just stretch out on your faith, knowing I will make the way, receive your healing, receive your miracle today, if you only it's already done I have not seen nor you have heard all the good things that are in store for those who love the Lord hold on my friend don't you know he can open up doors no man can close You gotta keep the faith, never give up He's worked it out for you For you Oh, it's already done Hallelujah, it's already done Thank you, Jesus Just stretch out on your faith Knowing God
It's all.